Huh, this thing does work pretty well. Hey folks, it's been a while. I've been working hard on some projects in the background for the last little bit, but on the bright side, something very cool just showed up in the mail, and I think it'd be worthwhile for us to check it out. While I was working on the pen that I made in the last video, I learned how nice it was to do light milling operations on the mini lathe. I decided I would look into getting one of those milling cross slide adapters, and so looking around online, I found they ranged widely in price, and I thought it would be cool to check out the cheapest one I could find, just to see what you can get out of one of those import tools. Alright, here we go, live and unscripted, here is the unboxing, uh, where we will figure out exactly what kind of situation we've gotten ourselves into with this thing. Okay, well it seems packaged pretty well. That was probably not in frame. I can just get through the bubble wrap. Honestly, I first impressions are, are looking pretty good with this thing. Let's take it over to the actual bench and give it a closer look though. Okay, now that we've got this thing out of its packaging, I want to just take a second before we get too far into this just to quickly talk about what my expectations are going into this. So, first and foremost, I'm not expecting any sort of sub-thousandth accuracy uh, while milling with this. The goal is basically just to get something that can be used for some light milling and create working hobbyist parts. Uh, fully aware that this will not be comparable to a full-size dedicated mill, uh, but the key is, this was extremely inexpensive. I only paid around 140 Canadian dollars for it, uh, with taxes and shipping included. And it has the added benefit of not taking up additional room in the office here, uh, which is always a plus um, when you're pretty space limited like I am. And with that disclaimer out of the way, and all of our expectations checked, let's take a closer look at this. The first thing I notice is that the front mounting surface here looks like it's actually machined fairly flat, which is pretty great. Um, I think that parts like this, you know, just this, this front kind of face, are just produced by the millions in some factory somewhere and just reused in all of the import no-name tooling, uh, which is kind of nice because you know roughly what you're getting uh, if you've seen any of this stuff before. Uh, the next thing that I looked at was the castings, and they're, I mean, they're all right. Uh, again, I'm not expecting too much from this. The the main somewhat uh, sketchier parts are the way that this surface is ground to allow for the angle gauge to be written in. And the bracket here that holds the handle that you use to adjust the slide uh, looks slightly more anemic than I would want. Uh, but again, you know, considering the price, uh, I think this is actually going to work pretty well. The actual sliding component itself uh, is not bad. The handle turns pretty smoothly, even without any adjustments to the gib screws. And I can't feel any weird player warping in the ways. Other than that, there isn't too much to say about this. It's basically exactly what I was expecting, which, hey, no complaints there. And now all we need to do is get this thing mounted to the lathe for some milling. But as I'm sure you've noticed, that is not quite as straightforward as just notching this into the existing cross slide. The bolt pattern doesn't line up, and these pins are going to be a massive pain, so we're going to need to make some kind of adapter plate. Uh, I have a rough idea in mind of what that should look like, so I'm going to go sketch that out and get back to you. Okay, so this is what I'm thinking. I want to have two bolts here that interface with the current bolt holes that exist for the pivoting cross slide, and then two bolts that actually stick up and interface with the bottom of the milling attachment. And I came across a video while researching this by Steve Jordan, who put together a pretty similar design and drilled and tapped a hole in the cross slide up here to keep the milling attachment from pivoting when you're drilling into it. And I think that that's a good idea, uh, just because I'm slightly concerned that the torque generated from pushing on it out here might cause the rotating cross slide pivot to, to rotate. So an extra bolt will go a long way in keeping it from rotating. So yeah, with the rough idea in place, uh, let's hop into CAD and get this thing made with actual dimensions. So I was disassembling this bottom plate just to get some measurements for the CAD model. And there seems to be a couple access holes for these pins, so I'm going to go see if we can't get something in there and tap these out. I think it'll be a whole lot better if we don't need to deal with making these extra holes in our magic plate. 
All right, that didn't work at all, so we're going to have to go with plan B and just take the hacksaw and cut these down a bit. And it occurs to me now that I didn't actually explain why I wanted to remove these pins, uh, and it purely boils down to me not wanting to make a mounting plate this thick. Uh, it causes two problems. First of all, steel is expensive and I don't want to waste it. And secondly, a plate that thick raises this milling surface up too high in relation to where the chuck holds the milling bit. So, shorter is better. Uh, anyway, let's actually get to CAD now. Alright, here's the CAD model all dimensioned up, and I slightly altered it from what I had originally sketched out, just with how the dimensions worked out, but I think the spirit is still roughly the same. Here's what we have. The design is based on a 3 8 inch thick piece of steel, and I'm not going to use anything precision ground or anything kind of fancy like that, uh, at least not yet, so we're just going to go with standard 1018 cold rolled. There are going to be three M6 bolts holding it to the cross slide, with this upper one being the hole that needs to be drilled and tapped into the cross slide itself, and the remaining holes here are to provide space for the mounting bolts and posts that came with the milling slide, and that should be good to go. But I don't fully trust this design, so I'm going to go ahead and 3D print a version of this and make sure everything lines up before I commit to making the set of steel. Aren't 3D printers amazing? Honestly, I think it may be the single best purchase I've ever made. Just click a button and receive a fully formed part. Uh, giving this thing a little test. The pegs line up with the holes, and the holes in the bottom mounting plate line up well with the holes in this flange, which is always a good sign and never necessarily a guarantee sometimes when you're kind of doing these reverse engineering type builds. Something worth noting is if you can see here, this edge of the uh, mounting flange isn't parallel with the edge of this plate, and that's because the holes here that are drilled into this uh, the mounting flange uh, aren't actually clocked right in relation to the flat grind, or I guess flat cast sections here and here. Um, it's not actually a big deal uh, because the upper flange, or I guess the upper part of this mounting bracket, uh, rotates freely. If I can get that in, there, rotates freely uh, on this section, so it doesn't matter, um, but if that's going to bug you, I guess that's something, you know, one of those things that you get, but you pay for, so, yeah. Alright, so, bringing this thing over to the lathe, the compound slide holes seem to line up pretty well, but I missed modeling a feature to accommodate this little nub on the rotating pivot. Stuff like this is why I'm a huge proponent of always prototyping parts out of easy to work with materials before working on a final product. I fixed the model up in CAD, and to avoid remaking the prototype, I did the highly complicated fix of boring out a pocket with a hand drill and moved on to cutting the M6 mounting screws down to size. With the milling attachments slotted into place, we can get a good look at where the end mill lines up with the T slots on the face. This right now is set to its minimum height, and it reaches to around the middle T-slot, which I'm pretty happy with, as when extended, it'll give us a good bit of area to work with, considering the size of the lathe. Alright, and to make this thing out of metal. So I actually am going to alter the design a bit here, because when I went to pick this up, uh, it was actually a little bit cheaper to buy 3 inch wide 1018 cold rolled than 2.5 inch. Not sure why that is, but hey, I'll take it. So I altered the design a bit to take advantage of the extra space, and let's go get this thing made. Okay, to make this thing, I printed off a sketch of the CAD model, which I cut out and stuck to the metal using some of this really useful repositionable spray adhesive. I was going to use this template to mark the whole locations with a punch, but I thought I would try to use a CNC router to mark the centers, which seemed to work decently, although I did burn up the center drill I was using, which was non-ideal. After I got the holes marked, I drilled out the holes with many twist drills on the drill press, and then used flat news end mills where I needed a flat bottom countersink. I then tapped the holes in the plate as required, and moved on to the hole that needed to be tapped into the cross slide. Now, if you see here, I'm about to drill into the cross slide with a 7.1mm drill. I'm doing this because the other holes that needed to be tapped use this size. Those holes were M8 size bolts. This hole should be tapped for an M6. Naturally, I realized my mistake just as the drill exits the bottom of the material, and I promise you I handled it very maturely and very well. Alright, that was dumb. So to fix it, I just JB welded this nut into place, and that is all I'm going to say about it, and we are never going to bring this up again. Okay, that was a lot of drilling, but we are now ready to test it out. Let's get this thing set up on a lathe and see how well this thing works.
I bolted and screwed everything together, and once I got it roughly set up, I used a dial indicator to dial it in to be perpendicular to the spindle. Moving the attachment across the dial, it holds at zero up until around about here where there seems to be a 2000th low spot on the face of the table. Testing out the vertical axis, it's pretty much the same story. All in all, I have to say I'm pretty pleased with the results. And here we are! I figured we needed a part to make for our first actual cutting test for this thing, so I thought I'd make some vice clamps to hold this onto the front mounting plate here. And I think I'm going to make them out of this aluminum just because I have it lying around, and so without further ado, let's get this cut down to size and get something made. Okay, our aluminum block is cut down to size, and we're going to be using this 8mm end mill uh, to be doing our cutting. It's a 4 fluid end mill. And I know, before you tell me in the comments, this should be a collet chuck. I know that, but the problem is I don't have one, so here we are. One thing that I forgot to mention is that it is absolutely critical that you have a carriage lock on your lathe. Um, there's plenty of videos online about how to make this. Uh, I think I included some rough details about how to make it in the unboxing video that I made. Um, but yeah, if you don't have one of these when you're trying to do any sort of cutting, the carriage is going to slide all over the place and completely ruin what you're trying to do. If you ignore the ridges caused by the world's crappy spice, uh, I think this actually isn't too bad. Let me try to rig something up that might work a little bit better. I ended up 3D printing some temporary fixtures for the vise and remachined the front surface, but I still got the same ridges. Going back over the ridges seemed to clean it up pretty well, and the surface finish is definitely good enough for the parts that I usually need to make. Uh, I believe the issue is caused by some play in the cross slide that gets amplified by the large distance between the dovetail and the part. What I ended up doing to fix this was tightening down the Gibbs locking screws on the cross slide and mill only using the vertical axis on the milling attachment. This worked really well, there were no ridges, and I got a really nice surface finish out of it. And here's the finished part. Looking at the milled surfaces, I'm extremely happy with how they turned out. The surface finish feels great, and subjectively, I think that looks pretty good. As for the vertical milling slide itself, I have absolutely no regrets in picking this thing up. It does exactly what I wanted it to, and maybe even a bit more. Uh, having a tool like this really opens up a lot of possibilities with parts that I can make, things that I can do, and I'm very excited to have that capability. Anyway, I think that about wraps up this video. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments where you think this setup can be improved. I'd be interested to see if there's any ideas floating around out there that can make this even more useful than it already is. And with that, Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.